How's it going everyone? JKXVX here, back on Forza Horizon 4 once again. I know this video is a little bit late, I'm sorry about that, but you have probably clicked on this video for the title. If you don't know already, a brand new massive game mode has been announced for Forza Horizon 4. And in today's video I'm going to tell you what it is, and mostly in today's video I'm going to tell you literally all of the information you need to know about it. Basically the concept of it and how it works, because I noticed lots of people are uploading about it, my video is going to focus on exactly how it works, how you win and how you play it to build it short and also all the rewards as well. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. There is a new game mode coming called The Eliminator and it is essentially a battle royale of Forza Horizon 4. We all know what PUBG is, we all know what Fortnite is, Call of Duty Blackout. This is basically a battle royale mode in Forza Horizon 4, obviously tweaked to match racing, you know what I mean. Um, I'm going to get into all of the details now. I'm going to show you as many screenshots as I can to match these details. But let's get into how the Eliminator works in Forza Horizon 4. So, the game mode is free. It's going to come to all Forza Horizon 4 players on Thursday, the 12th of December, which is tomorrow or today if you're watching this possibly. And it's going to be free. It is a 72 player battle royale. So there's 72 players all on the map and you basically battle to be the last one alive. You search for an Eliminator match through the pause menu. You go to your pause menu, you go to Eliminator, you search for a lobby just like you would as a multiplayer lobby, and then it drops you in a world with 72 other people. Now the concept of it is the way it works is there's 72 people in the world and you eliminate people by challenging them to head-to-head -head races. So let's say I'm driving around in this world, there's 72 players left and I come across a player. If you get close enough to the player, it will force a head-to-head -head race. The winner of that race stays in the game and gets an upgrade to their car. And the loser of that head-to-head -head race, which is only a short race, the loser gets eliminated. That's the main concept of it. Now there's still a lot more information to go over. You're probably wondering about the cars. Now there are 10 different car levels. You can't just pick whatever car you want and then go into the lobby with that. That's not right. There's car level 1, there's car level 2, all the way up to car level 10. And obviously the higher the level, the better the car. So as this game progresses, you will want to get a higher car to have more chance of winning. And it's worth noting that just like every other Battle Royale game, the zone or the map gets smaller and smaller, the circle comes in um, as the race goes on, as the game goes on, sorry. So let me just focus once again on the actual elim elimination and the map part of it and then I'll focus on the cars. So you get into the game and apparently the games last about 15 to 20 minutes from when it starts from when the circle gets to its smallest point. And what I mean by the circle is the map basically gets smaller and smaller. And if you go outside of the, re the restricted zone, your health will go down and you basically have a chance of being eliminated. So you have to stay in the area as it gets smaller and smaller. And it usually takes 15 minutes from the start of the game to when it gets quite small. So yeah, to eliminate players, as I said, you need to basically you need to lose a head-to-head -head race or knock yourself out from being outside of the zone for too long. Now let's talk about the cars, what cars you get, how you can upgrade them, how you lose them, how you upgrade from level car level 1 to car level 10 as the game goes on. So you spawn in with a car level 1. Now we've seen one of the car level 1s which is a Mini Cooper, quite a slow and basic car but as the game starts everyone's going to be that level so that's normal. Now there are multiple ways to get your car upgraded or to rank up to a level 3, a level 4, a level 5, whatever. Number one is to win head to head races. So you find players, win the race, eliminate them and when you win the race they get eliminated but you have the choice to steal their car if they've got a better car than you or two, level up your own car. So that's one way to rank up to a second or third level. For example, a level 3 car could be a Volkswagen Towrag. Yes, I like to say it like that. Or the Volvo V60, I believe it is. Those are some level 3 cars that you could get upgraded to. Another way to level up your car, if you don't want the slow ones, is to find rare car drops, similar to supply drops in all the other Battle Royale games. You find the um, supply drops with flares, I believe. You can see them in the distance. And the first person to get there gets an upgrade to their car. So you might go from level 1 to level 3, or level 1 to level 2, something like that. So you can either play it selfie and try to find the drops, or just go mad and try to win all these races to level up your cars. 
So it's worth noting that you can't just drive around and avoid people because everyone will be much higher level than you and when it comes to doing a race you'll just lose. So you need to play it tactically. And a few other things about the head-to-head -head races. The train horn just went off, that's weird. These head-to-head -head races you can't avoid. If a player comes up to you and is close enough to you, you'll be forced into this head-to-head -head race. Otherwise, you'd just be able to drive around and not race anyone. So, got to be careful. You've got to watch out for players. And in the world, um, you can interfere with other people's head-to-head -head races. You can see them on the map. So, if you see two people racing, you could drive up to them and start smashing into them and basically interfering with their race which is going to be quite interesting when it comes to the final circles. I mean you could play it tactically if you see a level 8 car versus a level 3 car you could interfere with that level 8 car to try and eliminate it. You never know. Just play it tactically. Now you want to be obviously the highest level car by when the game starts to end which I'm going to touch on now. When the, the circle will get to a final showdown point, so the circle of the map will get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it will get to a certain point where it will begin a final showdown race. Now, there may only be like 10 people left at this point, and what it does is it starts a timer, and at the end of this timer, there will be one random point blobbed onto the map and the circle will disappear, the whole map is available, and the first person to that point wins the Battle Royale. So it starts with the whole map, over 15 minutes the map gets smaller and smaller and smaller, gets restricted, by then you probably have a big car, and there's only a few people left, and then when it reaches the final circle, a countdown starts, and it will give you, and everyone will get a point at the same time, so everyone could get a point up at the city. And then from then on, it's a race to the city. The first person there wins the Battle Royale. The second person there gets second place, third person's third place. So you don't get eliminated per se, you get like seventh place, for example, if you're the seventh person there. That is pretty much everything you need to know about the racing side of it, how the cars sort of work, how the Battle Royale works in general. Now just a few other examples of the cars you can get. We know that the Volkswagen Towrag is a level three car. The Mini Cooper is a level 1. The Bent Bentley Bentayga, if that's how you say it, is a level 6. The Bentley Continental is a level 7. The Volvo V60 is a level 3. And the Gallardo Spider is a level 8. And then a level 10 car can be something like the Hoonigan cars, which are best off-road and on-road. Now, some of you at this point are probably wondering, wow, this is good. I wonder what you get for finishing. Well, we do have technically a list of rewards that you get. As we all know, the Toyota Supra is releasing tomorrow or today, whenever you're watching this Thursday, the Toyota Supra is back. And you can either buy the Supra from the Auto Show for 200,000 credits, or if you play one game of Eliminator, and whether you win or lose, you'll unlock the Toyota Supra for free. So you may as well do that instead. So to put it short, if you play a game of Eliminator, win or lose, you'll get the Toyota Supra. And you basically level up your character through the Eliminator as well, you get like tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, and at tier 2 you get the Supra, at tier 3 you might get another little reward, a shirt probably. I know there are a few other new cars to the game, look at my other video for that. There are a few other new cars which have been released to the game which you can unlock through the Eliminator as you level yourself up through it. So cars are to be gone, I don't know how much XP and money you get for winning, not too sure, but cars are definitely there to be won which is good. I believe that every information that I personally know or that I saw from the screen, I'm sorry if you can hear my Facebook beeping, it's getting annoying on my nerves as well. That's most that's most of the information you have to know about the car about the game mode anyway. Eliminator, I'm actually gonna turn that off. Let's do my editing. I did predict a couple of days ago or yesterday actually. Yay, yeah, was it yesterday? I don't know. When did I last upload? I did predict in a video that the Eliminator was going to be a big thing. I didn't think it was going to be this big. Certainly didn't think it was going to be a battle royale mode. Absolutely crazy and to be honest, although in the past I thought Forza will never do a battle royale, it's just not suitable for racing games. This this is pretty cool. Pretty cool idea. Props to them for that. And believe it or not, they've actually sort of been working on this for 16 months, which is well before Forza Horizon 4 was even released. So I don't know how a team like Playground Games managed to keep something like this secret. Job well done. You may have also seen on the channel, I've probably put up two videos today. Another one's about all of the new cars coming in this next update. 
so that's that and i'll probably have another video on friday covering the full update 17 update which you'll be releasing tomorrow next week whatever i don't know let me know if this is something you think should be in Forza Horizon 4, if you think it's a stupid idea, if you think shiny old smells, or if you're excited to play it tomorrow. But anyway guys, leave a like if you've enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already for more Forza Horizon 4 content, there's been plenty of it lately. I'll see you all later.